here at Beam Global, and we're going to be talking to the CEO of the company. I've pulled my vehicle in to charge, and I want to show you it's actually working. And it works. So here's the CEO of Beam Global, and he's got an announcement he wants to make and give you a little quick review of uh, their product. Go ahead. Good. Well, thanks very much, Howard. Yes, I'm Desmond Wheatley. I'm the president, uh, chief executive officer, and actually also the chairman of the board of Beam Global, a San Diego-based sustainable technology innovation company. We invent, design, and actually manufacture here in San Diego solar-powered or renewably energized infrastructure products, chiefly for the electrification of transportation and also for energy security, by which we simply mean a more reliable source of electricity than that which you get from the utility grid. I'm standing here next to uh, our flagship product. This is the EV Arc electric vehicle autonomous renewable charger. And the word to underline there is autonomous. This thing is not connected to anything at all. It's not connected to the utility grid because it generates and stores all of its own electricity. So it doesn't require a utility connection for electricity. It's making it and storing it right here. It's also not even connected to the ground except uh, by gravity. Uh, this thing that the vehicle's parked on, uh, this is actually a, at once the dumbest and smartest part of the invention because this thing gives it the ballast and stability to allow us to put it in a standard size park parking space as it fits in a standard parking space doesn't reduce available parking anyway because the vehicle can park on it we don't need to do any on-site construction there's no digging there's no trenching there's no concrete work or anything else uh, our teams bring these things in and in less than one hour they deploy a permanent electric vehicle charging station as you can see it's got two chargers on it right now this one's set up to charge two vehicles at the same time we can in fact set them up with as many as six chargers so you can plug six vehicles in at the same time off this unit what we're doing is we're turning sunlight into electricity up here this whole thing is tracking it's following the sun as it moves across the sky that gives us about 25 percent more electricity than a fixed array and of course 25 percent more electricity means 25 percent more miles of driving capability that are going into this vehicle the electricity is then being stored in our own proprietary batteries up here, and then it's being delivered down through the column and into these chargers. I'll just let the Marine Corps fly over, and then we'll come back to you. As I said, the, the product is then uh, mounted on this ballast pad and fits inside a standard legal sized parking space without reducing parking in any way at all. Deployed all across the United States for all sorts of very excellent customers. New York City is our largest municipal customer, uh, for example, on the commercial side companies like Google. And then we're very proud uh, to have the product in use by the US military. The Marine Corps, US Army and the Navy all use this product. Now today, uh, what I'm also very proud to announce is that not only is the U.S. military uh, using the product, but also, if I can just introduce my friend uh, Brigadier Tom Harper here. Uh, welcome. Thanks, nice to have you here. Uh, nice to be here. We're looking forward to announcing today the fact that uh, also the United Kingdom's Ministry of Defense is going to be taking advantage of this product uh, and uh, using it in overseas bases uh, to begin with. So uh, that's what's the big news coming out of uh, Beam Global in San Diego today. So way back in 2010, uh, before Beam Global was even called Beam Global, we started looking at the electrification of transportation. And one of the things that became apparent to us was it was going to take a really long time to dig all the trenches and pull all the wires and do all the grid upgrades to put grid-tied electric vehicle chargers in parking spaces. And the numbers are enormous. Uh, there are about just under 300 million cars in the United States of America. That means we're going to need something like 60 million publicly available electric vehicle chargers. And if we're going to spend a couple of years digging trenches and pouring concrete for every one of those, clearly we're not going to win that war. This, the whole idea behind this product, which we developed back at that time, a decade ago, was to have something that was rapidly deployed so that we could at scale deploy EV charting without having to go through construction, without having to do the electrical work, and without relying on the limited amount of capacity that the centralized grid infrastructure has today. We came up with this product. Um, this product is transportable. Uh, it's very rapidly deployed. And some of the secrets of its transportability are that this column is actually hinged in two places here. And the whole thing folds in and down upon itself like this so that it can fit inside a standard size shipping container or on the back of a truck. Contrast that with some of our older units. We've got a little, this kind of like a museum here. The red one down at the end there 
That's unit 003. That's the, the third unit we made back in 2011, I think that was. Still working today. Very robust product. Been in use now for uh, 13 or 14 years and still working fine. Uh, but you'll notice that the equipment enclosure was on the ground. The batteries were on the ground. Uh, and it didn't have anywhere near as much uh, generation uh, capability as the ones that we're making nowadays. This, the ones that we're making now are much more powerful. Uh, this unit here was unit 007, no, no prizes for guessing why I kept that number. And again, the equipment enclosure was on the, uh, the ground there. Nowadays, we have the, equip the equipment enclosure up here, up top, and that gives us several benefits. Uh, chief amongst them is that the product is now flood proof to nine and a half feet. So we can be in, a, in an environment where we have flooding and of course with, with uh, increased weather events, hurricanes and all that sort of stuff, rising sea levels, there's a lot more flooding happening now. This product will survive a flood up to nine and a half feet. It's also rated for 160 mile an hour winds. Even though it's not bolted down or, or glued down, it's rated to survive 160 mile per hour winds, but in fact has survived 185 mile an hour category five winds down in uh, the Caribbean. So very, very robust American made product. In fact, it's made in this building right behind me here. Uh, we manufacture them in San Diego, invented in San Diego, manufactured in, in the United States right here in San Diego. And we're very proud of that. Um, and we're very proud of our customers as well, both uh, US-based customers and now, of course, as I mentioned, the, the United Kingdom military, which is a, a matter of some personal pride for me as well. My, my, both of my grandfathers were in the British Army. My father was in the British Army. My uncle was in the British Army. My nephew's in the British Army. And now the British Army is going to be taking advantage of our products. And we're very proud Thanks. of that. Um, good morning. My name is Brigadier Tom Harper, and I'm a member of the defense staff from the British Embassy in Washington. And I'm really excited to be in San Diego here today to be part of this contract announcement with Beam Global. And under the contract, we've bought 10 of these uh, amazing solar powered electrical vehicle chargers. And our plan is to send them to our sovereign base areas in Cyprus, where we'll use them not only for electrical vehicle charging, but also to do some experimentation because they can be used as mobile generators for things like computers in a deployed headquarters or medical monitoring equipment in a field hospital. And using these things will inform our development of solar energy uh, and solar power and the advantage really is for the environment. Clearly, this will help the military to comp uh, contribute to the British government's net zero targets, but it also enables us to have some resilience by not relying solely on fossil fuels. And linked to that, that also helps us to make some serious cost savings. So it'll be really interesting to see how this, uh, this trial and this contract progresses over the next few months. So here's the product in its folded down uh, configuration. This is for transportation. Uh, the same unit that we were looking at out in the parking space out there with the array up, capturing sunlight and turning it into electricity, now folded down on itself. The column uh, is hinged in two different places. And this allows us to get uh, one of these into a 20-foot standard shipping container or two of them into a 40-foot shipping container. And then when they arrive on site, what's going to happen is they're going to be placed in a parking space, a single parking space, and then using hydraulics, they're going to come up and position themselves to find the sun and then immediately start tracking to follow the sun as well to get that 25% uh, more generation. And the key thing is that there's no site preparation where they go. You don't need to do anything at all. You just put them down on the ground and they're there ready to withstand those 160 mile an hour winds, ready to withstand that nine and a half feet of flooding, but most importantly, ready to power these electric vehicle chargers from day one or from moment one, in fact. There's no commissioning required. There's no other on-site work. Now, another very important aspect of the product uh, up here is where we're storing energy. So inside this enclosure here, we have our proprietary and patented batteries, and then a bunch of other electronics and computers and things like that that are allowing us to take sunshine, turn it into electricity, store the electricity, and then deliver that electricity in a usable manner to an electric vehicle. But that's not all they're supplying electricity to. Each of these is also equipped with this emergency power panel. What's so cool about this is that this unit's not only providing electric vehicle charging, it's also providing a supply of electricity that can do any number of other things uh, uh, in, in environments where it's either too expensive, too disruptive, or impossible to deliver the utility grid, or very importantly for a lot of our municipal and, and indeed military customers, when during a blackout or a brownout, we're still able to supply vital electricity, not just to fuel their vehicles, but also to fuel uh, other devices here. Uh, I think, uh, Brigadier, you mentioned computers and life-saving equipment and whatever else you might find in the field. Drones even, uh, uh, which of course, if you're following the news in Ukraine right now, everything's every day it's about drones, drones, drones. Uh, there's clearly great applications to be able to provide electricity without requiring liquid fuels in a forward operating environment, uh, without having a, a heat signature, without making a noise, without having exhaust, uh, and all the other things which are difficult, expensive, 
uh, sometimes impossible to deliver to a forward operating environment. This thing's going to do it for you without making any sound uh, and without ever requiring to be refueled. So it's a very, very dynamic product, not just about charging cars, but also about providing this source of power for all the other important uh, uh, utilize, utility cases for electricity, which is frankly everything nowadays. Everything relies on el electricity, uh, more or less. And so we're making it available without construction, without trenching, without needing to connect to the utility grid. That new feeling point is really interesting as well, because if we can reduce the number of convoys that we have to send to a base, that's less troops at risk, it's more efficient, it saves costs, and it saves the environment. So it's really good all around. Excellent point. I mean, diesel's not just expensive in terms of dollars, it's also expensive in cost of lives, delivering it to a forward environment. Um, don't need to do that with this product. So just talk about the economics of these units for a little while. Um, in almost every case where these things are deployed, the cost of the unit, what the customer paid to buy the unit, is less than their avoided costs of construction and electrical work. In other words, the money that you would spend digging trenches, pouring concrete, pulling wires, doing switch gear upgrades, transformers, meters, and all that sort of stuff, would be more than the actual cost of this unit. What's nice about that is that day one, your break-even ROI is that you spent less money buying this product than you would have spent disruptively digging up your parking lot and going through all that nonsense, which is we could take a year or, or two. In this case, you get a one-hour deployment, it could end up costing you less money than you would have spent on construction and electrical work. Now, thereafter, you, all the energy that you get out of the thing is essentially coming to you without cost. So there's no unit cost of the energy. If you're running a fleet or something, you're now running fleet vehicles without having to pay for fuel that you put into them, because, of course, we're getting all that from... Uh, renewable sources and then there's just an, there's another nice little thing going on here in the united states at the moment of course our, our our british army customers won't get to take advantage of this but in the united states our products are eligible for the federal itc that's the investment tax credit so they're essentially getting a credit of 30 cents on the on the on the product so if you spend a million dollars on the product you get three hundred thousand dollars back against your federal tax liability and then on top of that, there's also other incentives like Rule 30C for the charter, where you're getting money back on the, on the charter itself. And just as a sort of final benefit, you can use what's called Rule 179 depreciation, which allows you to depreciate the value of the product in one year against your tax liability. Even though it's a 20 year product, you get to depreciate it in one year and takes that, take that against your, your tax liability. So you've had a 30% deduction or, or credit rather on the product you're at the, the, the depreciation that you're allowed is on 85% of the, of the cost of the product. So you get a little 15% bonus in there as well, because of course you didn't pay 85% of it, you only paid 70% after the ITC. So these tax incentives, certainly an important part of the economics, but in fact, even without them, even without the tax incentive, still cheaper in most instances to deploy this thing uh, in locations where it's difficult to get the, the grid, expensive or disruptive, you're going to save money day one by avoiding all those construction electrical costs. The tax incentives just make it that much sweeter.